The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Friday, Friday, the 5th of November. My pleasure to be here. This is the early edition. I'm doing it at 8 o'clock. Well, it's actually 8.06 a.m. Eastern Time. It will be replayed at my usual time at 10. I have to be out today. So what we're looking at here is the Dow Futures. We're up 39 at 36,045, just underneath the leg E high that was made at 36,076. Let me just go through this quickly because I had a lot of questions. And we usually think Friday, or think of Friday as technical Friday in the Chapman Way methodology. Question I had was in the uh, notation, uh, where would I give it an alternate count? Well, in this case, uh, we've got a peak E formed yesterday, 36,000. Whoops, let me get that right. Yep, 36,168 on uh, Wednesday. Thursday's high was a little bit lower, so it makes a peak. So at this point, calling it an E, there's no question about it. Just for the for the questioner, the Dow Diamonds has an alternate count, F slash B. I'm calling it an F for now, but we're going to stick with it as a uh, leg, uh, just a, a continuation of the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like that. For the moment, no need to have any alternate counts. Now, we've got news coming out at 8.30 this morning. It'll be, I think, it's to do with jobs. Uh, it's going to be really important for a couple of reasons. The Dow has been, just lately, over the last few days, been under, it was leading and now it's underperforming um, the other indices. And I'll show you what we're talking about. Yesterday's close in the S&P was at 4680.06. The all-time high yesterday was 4683.00. The futures, if I go to the continuous contract, have already gone higher. They're at 4684 at this particular point, up about 10. And this in the futures is C. I, I, it's, I, it's always upsetting to me when I get this divergence. That's not the point. The point is, um, I used to go with the, uh, in this case, I go with the cash. And the cash index says that the S&P is in a leg D. In the, just real quickly, for those since Technical Friday, for those of you who are a little bit new to my work, I, I look at the lowest, most obvious low bar to start counting a waveform to the upside. I count each successively higher peak. I alphabetize them, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. has a lot more meaning on the way up than the way down. We use other techniques on the way down as well. But on the way up, I, I'm absolutely very strict about this. A buy signal goes to a buy mode, and that should take you to at least a D. It can go E, F, and G, or recycle to a whole brand new buy mode. Not the point. The point is that once I put an up arrow, meaning there is a buy mode, that implies that there should be four higher peaks at minimum. All right. Now, with that said, let me show you something very interesting. This is November. In the month of November, we are still only in leg B from the March low of last year, 2191. We've gone to 4680, and we are still only in leg B. And that says no matter what, it will take you until the early part of 2022, that's next year, to get to at least a peak D. Isn't that interesting? It doesn't mean to say you can't have a massive sell-off. It just says that at that low of 2191, there's just no way in this move, it's never happened before, but it certainly could, that you've gone broken at a B at an all-time high and then plunged back to your starting point. So that says there should be, over the coming months, regardless of how intense any severe sell-off is, higher highs. Just making it as simple as possible. We're bumping, just about to bump into the weekly inside track repellent zone in the uh, S&P. Um, and we're going to be looking at the QQQ, 
which is still strong today. It's up 61 cents pre-market at 398.83. I made a high yesterday at 399.20. It's gone. Uh, the the futures, the NQ futures have gone higher. They're, and they're only in leg C, just like the cash. So this says to me, and this is what I've been discussing, might be a little premature in having uh, finally taken profits in our uh, long, uh, near, near term long positions in the Dow, Dow via the diamonds and reversed course. But at the same time, Dow has been stalling. The S&P is in leg D. That's where we can start to expect some kind of a pullback. Doesn't have to be. But that's where we can anticipate it. And the other thing is that the QQQ is still very strong. It still has to make a peak. See, it can't do that. Um, in the futures, it can't do that. In the QQQ cash, if all of a sudden at 8.30 this morning, uh, there's some news that really reverses the market precipitously, then we can anticipate that, yeah, maybe we'll make a peak C in the cash. And then the QQQs on Monday or Tuesday uh, start to rally again and make that D, and then we've got to be very careful. But the IWM has taken a leadership role. This is the small caps. Uh, it's at 240.16 right now. It made an all-time high. I'm, at least for now, I have no reason why not to keep calling this a sequential alphabet. This is an E to an F. This is an F right now. We're making a high of 240.94. Uh, uh, let's see what happens today in the small caps. Leadership role finally got to that P leg D in the monthly chart and a leg D in the weekly chart. So it's saying, well, we, anything can happen from here. That's all I'm saying. So that's the uh, Russell 2000. Let me show you the semiconductor index quickly. Semiconductor index pre-market, 296.8. Unbelievable. 296.84 up 2.54. Yesterday's high was a print of 2. 96.10. So if this holds, then we should see a new leg E high, all time high in the weekly and the daily chart of the SMHs. And I consider this a leading indicator. So until they really t turn down sharply, you've got strength there. All right, let's go to gold. Uh, gold right now is uh, down, uh, it's unchanged, it's 1793. Remember yesterday I was saying, for a couple of days, I was saying, What's the 200 period moving average of 1801? That's resistance, but this is really good action in gold so far. But the weekly chart is suggesting we're still in the trading range. Until we start trading at 1823 or higher, this is a trading range and we can stay there. But it's fascinating. Well, let me just do silver quickly. To get this all out of the way because we've got a lot of questions that I need to answer. I want to go through all the 120 minute charts in a moment. We've got a peak D in the silver. It's pulled back quite sharp. It isn't as good a pattern now as, as the gold is. Uh, it's in this down channel. It breaks out if it, at 23.85 right now. If it, if it can trade, it doesn't have to close. If it can just hit 24.15, that will say, aha, it's going to try to make its way towards the 24.61 and 200 period exponential moving average. A pullback under 23.40 says, nah, not now. All right, this is going to be important. High-grade copper. High-grade copper is not showing any strength right now. It's at 4.31. It's in the lower range. Now, this is going to be very important. Why on earth could you have the dollar moving up and gold moving up in the same sequence? Well, it happens every, every year about three to four weeks periodically throughout the year, you will get them moving in not the same percentage, but the same direction. Otherwise, they're usually moving counter. Meantime, the dollar is 94.53 up 19 ticks, looking really strong. And um, that monthly, monthly chart is in leg B. I'll talk about it when we get back. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. 
For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, we're back. Early editions, 8, uh, 18 a.m. in the morning, and we replayed it. This will be at 10 18. Uh, we replayed at 10 o'clock. And of course, we've got great programming coming up. Uh, Larry Pesavento will be up at, uh, well, we've got Tommy O'Brien Jr. This is the, and, and he'll be doing market kickoff at 9 a.m. So 9 a.m., then you get 10 o'clock, my show will be repeated. And then, of course, 11 o'clock, you're Larry Pesavento. Don't forget, Larry's got a, an all day webinar. Wow, that, should, that, that, that should be a really fun, good timing for coming up. I believe it's next week. And then we've got uh, think, think or Swim. We've got, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien. Great programming. All right, let's get back to our story here. The dollar. So uh, this is Technical Friday. So let me show you. So this made a peak F in the Chapman Wave at 94.56 on the 12th of October. Pulls back to 93.28. Doesn't sound like much, but believe me, in the dollar, that, that's quite a bit. And then it has a fantastic spike, goes sideways, and another spike. The reason why it's gray A and gray B is because the stochastic and MACD were not giving signs of, of, of a positive crossover. And until you break to a new high, because we did not take the starting point low, that's right there. And uh, yeah, yes, we are along, we're still along the dollar from um, April of 2018 at 90.07, only taking one small bit off at 96.58. It ran all the way to 102.99, uh, and I think it was January, and then uh, it's been pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, and it went all the way back to the 89s, and, and now, and we are still long, and we are still long. Uh, we, the stop held in our UUP, that's the, that's what we had, and I keep it because I, I treat it as um, the United States emblem. It's like an icon of the U.S. economy, which I think is doing way better than a lot of people are talking about. So what happens is, this is a peak F. It could go to a G. It's unlikely, but I have a, a gray, I'll call it an alternate count, until it breaks. It doesn't have to close. It just has to break above 94.56, and then I immediately put a G slash B. And today's high so far is 
So this is the dollar index fund. And the reason I do that is I wait for the MACD to cross positive. It has. I wait for the stochastic to get to 80%. It's only at 72%. And I usually use on balance volume, but this is the index and you can't trade the index. You have to trade the UUP and there is no volume here. So, so far, we've got two out of three saying this could be, a, uh, I'm still treating it as a gray B, which will go to a G slash B if there's a new uh, re recovery high. But I'm pretty sure immediately I'll say, I think that's a, P, a leg B, and then we should go to a C and a D. That'll be very positive for, for the dollar. And we'll see how it impacts gold, because gold is being, um, is holding very nicely now. Um, it's for other reasons, and I'm trying to make that point for about three, four, five months now. I've said, try to think Dolly, Vixie, Bondi, and Goldie as separate entities. The, the, the volatility index, we'll see a test today. If the volatility index, which is trading at 15.35 uh, at this particular point, if it starts to break under 15, this market will expand its upside move and it'll be very positive. If for any reason by to later today or Monday, uh, the VIX starts to trade in the 16.30 to 16.80 or even 17.30 area, anytime between now and Tuesday, you will suddenly see a market pullback. And that's kind of the one thing. The dollar is independent of gold, but at this point, they're actually moving in the same direction. So. And the other, the other aspect, so you've got dollar, bonds, gold, and VIX. So treat them as, as separate things. There are moments where they all come together to mean something. And that would be if gold suddenly spikes much, much higher. Forget about the dollar for the moment, but gold, that would mean watch the XLF. Watch the XLF because why? The financial spider fund trading at uh, 40.17 pre-market up 17 cents has made a peak D. It's been fantastic. It's only I'm still calling it a leg C for now in the weekly chart and a leg D in the monthly. Um, if international markets, that is countries, start to f f uh, get really nervous about the economies, then they immediately start to buy gold. That's where gold takes, its, takes the place of what Bitcoin has been doing. Bitcoin is stuck. It's made a peak D at 68,030 all time high. The leg C, a peak C in the weekly chart, still very positive, but going sideways in a consolidation. So I'm trying to say, trying to separate these things. There's a moment where they might all come together, but watch gold if a gold really spikes higher as the financials pull back. And they will really only pull back if the TLT, which is bonds, uh, up 20 cents at 147.30 can spike into the 149.80, area. And then all of a sudden you're looking at something saying, hey, we might be having some economic weakness. So money is coming out of the weakness of stocks into uh, the security of bonds. Uh, so it's, it's fairly complex. Don't treat it complex right now. Just make it as simple as possible. VIX index goes into the 17s. We're going down in the market. As it stands right now in the 15s, it's so far a positive. But you've got, even within stocks, you've got some stocks that have been blasted because of the, the earnings disappointments and some stocks that have just exploded to the upside. And you can actually see that with some of the SMHs because they've helped the SMHs. Really look at this gap. I mean, a gap to a new all-time high with a massive bar like this. I need to talk about that in a moment. Uh, actually, let me talk about it now before we get to uh, the 8.30 uh, economic report. So when you see this kind of spike, what happens is, there, to me, there are only two, two out outcomes. One is, because it's broken so sharply above the previous high, this could be almost like a brand new move, even though it could be a coda move to a particular early phase, you know, meaning time time frame. This is a daily time frame. Um, and that means that you could get something like this, that yes, there's a little bit more to go, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to go into a stalling action like that. So yes, you give back. It's so interesting. You say, oh, let's just give back a day or two. What do you mean a day or two? Look at the day or two. You've gone from 270, some 277 to where we were, uh, to 296. 
I mean, that is a huge move for two days. So you give back just two days and there you are in the rectangle formation. That's number one. Number two is there's an Eiffel Tower and it goes straight up and then out of the blue, you just get this just a terrible bunch of news and whatever it is you're following collapses and it goes straight up and straight down. It looks like an uppercase A, capital A, or the Eiffel Tower. We call it the Eiffel Tower reversal pattern. Uh, and it comes straight down and you will see the SMHs at 274 by this time next week. I, I, I'm not sure that's going to happen right now, but we'll see what happens. Because after all, are we now looking at there's no problem with the chips? We've got chips all over the show. Um, or is it because of the scarcity and the, they're being priced just like the uh, like Ford and General Motors are, are seeing big profits because the cars that they have are being sold at top price, no discounts. So that's it. So now I'll put the whole thing together, watch the VIX index, watch the TLT, and we're going to be coming up with something in another couple of minutes, four minutes, and we'll have the job to do. I hope somebody can come, something to watch again. Why? And I just take the action of the SP. Now we have SP one, two, a leg, D, a leg, E, and are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. I have one more pack, and what is the time? The time, oops, the time is exactly 8.29. 8.29 is you've got less than a minute to go, and we'll see what happens. Watch the futures. Let's go there right now. Look at the futures. Look at the futures. Made a peak E, a leg E, a peak E in the one-minute one chart. It's coming back down, going up, going to a higher high. It's now up 12.50 in the E-mini, and we've got leg F. 
ho, ho, ho. It's still the day is young. I'm not sure what the result is. 531,000K jobs added. Hmm, I'm not sure what was anticipated. Uh, that is so far treated as a good sign. 14.50, 14, well, 14. Oh, we're watching this closely. So let's continue. We'll wait just a few minutes, wait for things to settle because anything can happen here. The Dow is, the futures are up 80. We'll be watching this very closely. Where does it settle? I'm not sure. Where, well, we'll see what happens. All right. Now let's go to a couple of things. I wanted to go to, we're going to go right here. We'll come right back in a moment. I had a question about real estate to select sector ETF, the XLRE, trading up 12 cents at 48.23, made a peak D yesterday, did a cup formation, beautiful. This is just almost a perfect, let me just see if I can make this right now before we go back to the futures. We've got to wait for things to settle down. Remember, the market doesn't always know there are expectations and then there are results. So we'll see how the market settles down. This is going to be at the end of the day, a turn down day? Is the Dow going to show relative strength today while the others show weakness? What's going to happen? We'll know very soon. My guess is that we're getting real toppy on the short term and that at some point very soon we should see some kind of a pullback. And that pullback will be, so that's the left side, right side price time match right there in XLRE. There it is. Okay, get that going there. So, uh, yeah, so the question was, what was the question? Uh, Basel XLRE has created a V bounce at this high area. Thoughts? Yeah. So my thoughts are that this double top in, at a leg D, it's actually a peak D, has the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence is strong. Stochastics flattened 89%. On balance volumes a little overbought and pulling back a tad. The relative strength is good. It's starting to pull back a little bit, but it's still very good. So the V-shaped pattern in the weekly chart and the monthly chart suggests that as long as this can keep a high level consolidation and digest any uh, any pullback between, it's at 48.11, between 47 and a break into the 49.30s, somewhere around there, that's very good action. If in fact by Wednesday, of, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, it has closed above 49.50. That's not only is that, well, it only has to close above in the monthly chart to go to leg D, 44.82. One penny above that high that was made three months ago starts a leg D. And that's going to be really important, number one. Number two is uh, the weekly chart hasn't seen the MACD cross positive. When and if it does, that should be a big positive. Right now, it looks more like it wants to go sideways. It's having a high-level consolidation. This is a real estate select sector ETF, almost at an all-time high. I think this is really good action. And it says high-level consolidation, probably with really good support in the 47s. If it closes under 47, it says, all right, it's going to have a bit of a pullback. But in the meantime, it's acting really well. Hope that helps you. Um, question about NVIDIA, NVDA. Maybe we're going to get back to uh, the futures in a moment. The Dow futures up 105 points. The S&P futures are up 16. So there's a catch up now in the Dow. We'll see how that's going to play out. And I need to go to... All right. This is a leg C in NVIDIA, just like the, the um, QQQs. And it's up pre-market at three. <laughs> Yesterday's high was 313.65. Pre-market, it is trading at 304.63 at um, up six, and it closed yesterday at 298. Very, very good action. I think it's getting, you know, to say it's getting toppy would be a silly thing to say because these things can look toppy, but they can keep going higher. But look, you see this B right here? You see that B down there? This is a pre-split. This is where I had it once before, 202.76 in October of 2018. Now, I love this. Really, remember, this is a rule of thumb. Really fantastic stocks. When they split, invariably, they go back to where they the split level was. Look at this. This, this stock, you might have heard of it. Um, it's not unknown. A few people know it. It's called Tesla. Look where Tesla is. You see this peak B right here? Up at 1,000, that's where I typed it in. 
So the price must have been at about 900 and something. Well, it was at, it's at peak B on the split basis at 200, well, 193.80 in February of 2020. So that's what happens. Look, this has gone way above the split. And what was, what was the split for um, Tesla? Wasn't it 10 for one or something? I can't remember. That's, that's amazing. That's why I like to keep the notation there because it says, ha, Fent, this is what's happened with all stocks, with really good stocks that split, they tend to do that. Now, let me just do this real quickly here. Um, look at that move. So this has to be a peak F, and this is, e uh, is that a peak? No, this is either a G or a brand, new, a brand new A. Oh, my God. This is a G in the one-minute chart, and it's a, a D. Is it a D? Let me see in the two-minute chart. Yes, this is a D. So this is fantastic action. Up 22 in the futures. Um, let's see. I think uh, have we been taken out of a... Uh, so we, we did attempt a short position in the, in the Dow Dimes. We have the core long position, not touching that from way back uh, in uh, 210, um, way back April of last year. And now we're, we're trading in the diamonds at uh, 362. Amazing. Uh, just amazing action. So within that context, the market has taken the news very positively so far pre-market. And pre-market, we're looking at the S&P at 46.96 in the futures, up 23. You're looking at the Dow futures. Look here now. Oh, I should do it right. Let me do it in the, in the daily charts. Here we go. So yeah, there we go. YM, that's the Dow futures, continuous contract. We're looking at it in leg D, broken above. The Chapman Wave inside track repeller zone in the weekly chart, huge leg D. This is a fantastic action. Leg E in the monthly chart, leg, uh, g -g -g -g. let me just see what this is, uh, 066, 076, yep, leg E in the daily chart. So the day is young, but so far this is really outstanding action. We did, we did that, we did that, the E-mini, the S&P. Continuous contract. The reason why I like to do the E-mini continuous contract is trading at uh, 46.94.25, and the uh, futures are. It's almost in line with the futures. So the, as you get closer to expiration of the monthly expiration, so these things change. Uh, yeah. So what we're looking at here is very strong leg C, and the on-balance volume is very overbought. But the nine period. The nine period moving average, the price is way above the nine, the nine is way above the 14. That's really important. And you've got the MACD very, still very strong. The histogram hasn't started turning down yet. And look at the flat stochastic at 98.07. Wow, that is really amazing. So, as I said, the subscribers, it'll have to be bad news. The market taking bad news as bad news, otherwise, buoyancy. I'll be back in a moment, Basil Chapman. Thank you, Keisha Sal. We want to talk about crude oil. Crude oil trade right now, only up 85 cents. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, 
Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. So I'm doing the early edition of my show. It's uh, now 8.42. Uh, We've had the announcement of the jobs uh, numbers. The market has taken it very positively so far. The day is young, but so far it's very good. I had a question about RE, which is Everest Re uh, Group. Uh, I believe this is in the real estate group, right? Uh, this is a leg D in the monthly chart, trading at RE is the symbol 268.81, uh, closed yesterday. It made a peak C. Everything about the C looks like a D. It, the, the price fell sharp. It even gapped down. Then it tried to fill it, and now it's pulled back again. MACD is weak. Stochastic is very weak. Relative strength is weak. Um, on balance volume is weak. So I, I think that this is just stuck in a range. And the range probably is w with resistance in the 275 to 278 area. Uh, and that's on a closing basis, probably. But if it closes under 265 in the next day or two, it could retest that low that was made at 261.33 on the 29th. And if it closes under that, that's the dreaded H pattern. And it says, be careful. Now, one of the things I want to mention in this particular pattern, that having made a new recovery high at this level um, with the peak C is very unusual. Look, the previous one went peak A, peak B. Peak C, peak D, and there it is. There's your D. You always get the Ds, and then you pull back sharply. So I, that was the one that had a high back in mid-August. So this one is a little unusual going to a C. I can't even find anywhere where I could say, well, there's a phantom peak. So this is a C, and so I'm not calling it a C minus yet until it really breaks down. But it has the pattern, the arch pattern that it keeps doing, and it's doing it once again. So look at this and say... Oh, first of all, that's there, all right? And this one's here. And the other one held quite nicely, actually went sideways. I think this is going to do the same thing. I think it's going to go sideways. Just make sure that it holds 260 over the next week, if you're holding it. If you're looking to buy, I just right at this moment, I'm going to say, I'll look at it again next week. At this moment, I can just say, I, I'd be a little careful. Um, let's see. Now, I want you to do this while we've got a chance. Let's go to all the 120 minute charts. I'll, I'll go to, I'll do the YM, which is the Dow futures. So it's broken out. And so far, as I understand it from my, from the charts, we have not been taken out of our short position. We've got a, just a one and a half, two percent risk. We've had really nice gains on the, on the upside. And yes, the Dow did stall. Now it's acting very well. We'll see how it closes. But this is the futures. So, yeah, is this going to be an F or is this a brand new leg B, uh, a C? No, that can't be the low bar, cannot be the high bar. So that has to be A and that has to be a F slash B. 
and so forth with the bank D crossing positive, I'm going to say it's a good chance that that's not an F, that it's probably a leg B, and that we're going to have a higher highs. I don't know yet, because it's just gone above the inside. Uh, this is the up channel with the inside track repellent zone. Certainly broke above it, so that's the YM trading at 125, the Dow futures. The E-mini, uh, sorry, the S&P has gone to a leg F just above its Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Does this become a propellant zone or do we fall back in it by the end of the day? It's hard to say because there is definitely strength in only the Dow was weak. The others were going to all-time highs. Dow yesterday failed to do that, but it was at an all-time high the previous day. So now what we're looking at is make it as simple as possible. The E-mini is up 18. If by after 3 o'clock, no, after 2.30 this afternoon, if the E-mini is up, 15 or more points, that's really good action. There's no question about that. If it's given up a huge chunk of the gains and all of a sudden it's only up eight, that says just be careful because start some kind of a pullback starting next week. But so far, all I can say is based on this um, daily chart, all the technicals are good except the unbalanced volume is uh, somewhat overboard. Let's go to the NQ. This is the uh, NDX 100 trading vehicle. It's up 44. It's pulled back from an intraday high and leg D in the champ wave inside track repellent zone. So all of these, if they break above the high that was made just in the last 30 minutes and they're holding above those highs all the way through the session, it's just going to force probably force buying into the close. So at this particular point, the N NQ Remember the QQQ is in leg C, the NQ uh, futures are in leg C. I'm waiting for at least a D before we start to see some kind of a pullback. That could happen next week. But in the meantime, I like what I'm seeing here in price. But the technicals are saying uh, this is an important moment because if the QQQ suddenly sees some weakness, and there were some stocks like Square, there were a couple of stocks that was anticipated that have good earnings, they were disappointing. So we're going to be watching this because it's very uneven now in the um, it's very uneven in the price action of many key stocks in many sectors. Uh, I want you to look at the IWM. Let's go. I don't know if I finished the RTY. Yeah, RTY made a peak D, pulled back sharply. That's the Russell 2000 futures up 25, 60 at 24, uh, 24 26, 40. Made a new all time high in LA. I'm calling this an E for now. It could recycle to an E slash B, but just for the moment, I'm calling it E in the 120 minute chart. Uh, Magdi's just, it hasn't quite crossed positive. Uh, but so far, this is good action. And uh, I'm just saying, if it breaks above two, four, three, seven, there's a good chance in a try for 2440s. If there's a sudden reversal later in that, I'm not sure now what can do it because you've already had the jobs report. If there's a pullback and you start to see it below 2418, sorry, no, I didn't mean that. I mean 2420. No, that's still not what I mean. 26 points, 24, no, 2400, that's right, 2400 to 2438, any point today, that says, oops, now you're starting to see a slide in the IWM. I'll go to the actual IWM chart itself. I don't think I've got it, no, yes, I have. So that's gone D, this is a leg F, peak F in the 120 minute chart, and that's saying, oops, there could be a little bit of a digestive phase because it's had such a spectacular run. Uh, it has been breaking out and then leading to the upside. So maybe a little bit of a pullback here. Let's look at crude oil. Uh, we timed it for subscribers to an opening call. We had just the most fantastic timing uh, based on the Chapman methodology. And then we just got stopped out by uh, one uh, by one and a half or two, two, uh, two ticks yesterday in our SCO, which is the uh, uh, this is the inverse short crude oil. And um, what a pity, uh, because we had, we had we did have nice gains. But we had great gains, over 10% in a very short period of time. So 85.41 was the crude oil hide went into the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It got uh, it pulled back to the trend line, the channel trend line support. It rallied, it created that pattern I call the H pattern, fails at an A or a B, the first or second peak. 
if it's, if it's the first and pulls back sharply within a couple of bars, it could take out the left side low for the pattern I call the dreaded H. What does that mean? It means it looks like this. You come straight down. You try to rally, not you, the whatever tradable it is you have, and then it fails at either an A or a B, and then it takes out the left side low. If it does that, it can continue lower. That's why we call it the dreaded H. On the, on the inverse, it is a Y pattern. That's what we see now in like the I, IWM, etc. So this has failed, and it's, this is the third session below that uh, low on the left side. You better watch. I think Google has made at least a short term top of what to disclose. Can I look at you and you can again as soon as I return? Yes, I can arrange for now. I'll be. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secure investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. Just before we finish, the UNG, which is the United States Natural Gas Fund. Uh, yeah, this is trading in a, in a, in a smaller radius. Um, it's at 19.02. If it's able to close between today and Monday, because it's a 120 minute chart, above 20, it's at 19.02. If it's able to even touch 20.23 in leg D, that's good. If it only goes slightly higher and then pulls back, it says it's going to stall here for just a little while longer. It could be in a trading range between 20, uh, maybe 20.30. And certainly the support at 18.60 has to hold if it goes under 18.60. It says on a short term, natural gas is just is consolidating. I do see the chance that by Thursday of next week, if at any point 
it just even touches 21, that's where it will start its bigger move. So that's the United States natural gas. And as I say, crude oil is really struggling here. Now, let me just do this because we're going to wrap up. Then you can go to Tommy O'Brien. Wonderful show. It's the, the uh, market kickoff. This is where he does the fundamentals together with the technicals. Great programming. And then my show will be repeated. And then you've got uh, uh, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Tom O'Brien wraps it up for the weekend. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to be uh, wrapping up in a few moments time. Just make it as simple as possible. Let's go to the Dow. If the Dow uh, is trading at, uh, it's at 36,124 at the close yesterday. The futures are up 134, so it's at 36,144 in the futures. If for any reason the Dow is holding steady after 1.30 to 2 o'clock, holding about a 90-point gain. That's going to be really positive. It'll force buyers into the close. But if there is a sudden turn down later on, uh, we're going to be watching that closely because in the Chapman Wave methodology, many of the indices are getting real close to D, E, and maybe an F. And that's kind of where they used to pull back a little bit. Just you know, briefly between daily charts, you have at least a three to one week, key day, one week pull back. So that's what we're looking for. Have a wonderful weekend. Check out both the form of daily news there. We've got some stocks at all time highs. See you on Monday. Have a great day and great week. Thank you.